Hi Joe, haven't seen you for a long time. I'm sorry, I cannot make it tomorrow, so I may not join the Sky Skype meeting that will arrange tomorrow. So instead, I made this video for you to demonstrate all of my codes I wrote for Aspen this summer. I hope it could be easier for you to read and uh, um, see what I've done. So the first code and the second code are VBA code, so they can run it in Excel. And the third code, since it's an MSMC simulation code, so I have to write it in my lab in, in VBA. Since it's a very old language for VBA, it is really hard for me to wrote this complicated code, especially for the demonstrating or visualize of the Monte Carlo chains. So let's start with the first code, the easiest one, a random number generator. It is a very small function, very small function, but very useful. What the function do, what the function does is that actually randomly selected some numbers from the given array. Here, as you can see, the function is called random selection. The first, it has two inputs. The first input is A1 to A20, which is your original data, and the second part, second input, is a percentage that you want to choose from the original data. Let's say 70%. So 70% of 20 numbers, that is a but that is 14. So the output is a matrix with two columns. So if you want to use the function, you just select two columns and with enough lengths, actually you can choose any lengths that you, length that you want. So let's say here, use Control Shift and Enter. It generated this random code for column B. You can see 14 random numbers, random selected numbers from column A. And the second column are the left ones from as the left ones compared to clone B from clone A. So you use clone B plus clone C, you get the original data. The reason why I use, why I cr even showing you the left one that is, is that if you want um, select from select from the area that you, ha you have already selected and you do not want to some numbers or some uh, claims to repeat again, you can use, you can select in this area, so it, the, the same number won't appear again. So I used uh, the dictionary method in VBA to roll this code, so it is very, very useful, very, very efficiency, and perhaps the most efficiency way to roll such a program in VBA, and you can see the code, it is very short and very easy to understand. So let's come to the second code. The second code is called, if I remember right, it is called a, a loss ratio triangle. It is actually a way ask the computer to generate the entire loss ratio triangle automatically since we have already have that tough job that afternoon to calculate the triangle manually it costs our time and even affects the accuracy of the triangle since you cannot promise you won't make a mistake while you're doing the calculation but for computers it will never be a problem still the function called loss ratio. It has um, two input. The first input here, as you can see, the blue area is the original triangle that you can download, you can, you can get from any report of a company. And the second is also a area, uh, area called uh, M1 to M12, which is the premium area. Also, you can get it from any public information. So with these two inputs, what does the function do is it generate all the left of the triangles and calculate the loss ratio. And here, still let's give it a try. Control Shift Enter. Yes. The function calculated all the ratios, all the loss ratios here and eventually give you an average. So I'm not cheating here. So if you want to see where, where it work or not, since this, this one with the color is what I did for demonstrating. And uh, I will try it again for you. As randomly select a large enough space and uh, give it a try, control shift, and uh, as you can see, it worked. So this code is wrote in VBA and the output actually 
is a combination of three parts. The output matrix, as you can see here, is a comp comb combination of this part and this part and this part. The reason I did this is that if you want to do a extension of your triangle, it is much easier to modify your code instead to rewrite it. So if you just do a slight change to your code, you can do the extension of extension of the triangle, and it will save you a lot of time. So that is the two code I wrote for in Excel VBA. So the third code is a code called. MCMC simulation uh, fitting. It is a based on Bayesian uh, interface of statistic world. So, generally speaking, it not only give you a single number of the parameters you are fitting for the claims, it gives you the distribution, or what we call in this scenario is the posterior distribution of the parameters. As you can see here. Oh, let me just open this code. Yes, this is a very long code. I tend to write into a uh, one file instead of several functions, several functions for the easy under easy reading or just to make it more readable. But in reality, if you want, if you ask me to write a function I, like this, I have to separate it into every small functions for future usable. So what does the function do? Actually, I will tell you step by step. The first part here is called loading the data. So the function loading all these claims, in my case, the marine claim, uh, into the function. So I have about uh, 1,800 data here. So, and then I defined what kind of a model I want the I want the program to fit in? So here I named it. Uh, I asked it to fit in a mixture of two uh, exponential distributions with it iteration of ten thousand and a threshold of zero. So this is just for demonstration. So I chose threshold for zero in my scissors. I have compared with each uh, possible threshold to find the best one. So after all of this. The computer will do all the simulations itself. The algorithm of MCMC is a little complicated, and I don't want to explain that here. The important thing is that use this Markov chain, uh, the property of Markov chain. The MCMC algorithm will eventually generate the Markov chain that uh, went to its stable. A stable distribution or a stable area. So each chain is these number values of the parameters. So if I have four parameters, I have four chains. If I have six parameters, I have six chains. As you can see, it's very quickly. It took the com computer this time less than 14 seconds to finish the MCMC simulation, and it'll give you a nice trace plot here, as you can see. Well, th th these numbers are iterations. So after about, let's say, roughly 200 iterations, the chains, the chain values tend to be stable and trampling around in a very narrow area. That is what we call a stable area, or it's pi a uh, posterior distribution. And this is parameter lambda num 1, as in the mixture of the exponential distribution. And this is lambda 2. And this is the omega 1 and the omega 2. As you can see, they all tend to be stable eventually after approximately, approximately let's say here, let's say just five or 600 iterations. And from the histogram, you can see well, this is the distribution of the parameters. This is something new. Instead of this solver method in Excel or EM method, you just get a single value. Here you have the distributions of the of the parameters. So for lambda one, we can see a roughly a normal distribution, and the same goes for the rest. And then let's see the mean plot here. I've and also created you a mean plot. The mean plot shows us the average mean of each individual chain is tend to be stable and eventually being a straight line. That means, well, the chain converges. What you ask is the good news. So the, the program will ask you to 
decide a safe bring-in iteration. Let's say set it the one thousand here. As we can see from the figure, it is approximately five hundred. Let's say so one thousand is much safer than five hundred. So let's say one thousand. So immediately the function will give you the parameter. This is a point parameter. As in our case, what we need to use in calculating room probability, this is our parameters here. And after this, the simulation, the, the, the code will automatically draw a QQ plot for you. And uh, let's just wait a moment. Since when you're doing a QQ plot, the computer will ask itself to, for this case, the mixture of two exponentials, it will use Newton Newton Ramsey method to solve every equation at, at every iteration. So after the QQ plot, you can see it's a very nice QQ plot only for no, actually not for very large claims, but that that is a weakness of mixture exponential of two with zero threshold. And the figure four show you a animation, animation of the chain moving in the parameter space. As you can see, the x, y, z axes are actually lambda one, lambda two, and omega one. And these three parameters, actually in mixture of two exponential, you just get the three parameters. So within this with these three parameters, you build a parameter space. So you can see the chain just moving in the parameter space and eventually converge to its stable position. Well, this is just for um, demonstrating, for showing you, well, this method works. Actually, in real study or in real work, you don't need, need this animation. So let's give it a little time round. Since I'm recording this screen, the computer is a little slow for the animation simulation. As you can see, it actually fits quite well. As I can show you, I keep this program running for, let's see, running for 25 times. And all of the results tend to be same, which actually surprised me. How good could, it, it, could, it may be good, but I, I don't expect it. It could be so nice, as you can see, for 25 trials. The parameters the MCMC estimated are actually quite close with very, very tiny variance for each one of them. And the time it spent is much less than I expected, especially for MCMC, especially for Monte Carlo simulation, which is always so time consuming. And not only for parameters, Value we have the distribution of parameters for now. We may not need this information But in the future study this information may be crucial or maybe even open a totally new book for us so That is my code all of the three code and I'm really sorry that I cannot attend tomorrow's Skype meeting. I hope See you soon then Bye-bye